Welcome back to the Lackluster Channel. Today's story was submitted by a viewer named Austin. On April 3rd of 2018, Huntsville resident Jeff Parker was experiencing a mental crisis. He called the police and expressed his intent to take his own life. Multiple officers responded to the call. The first officer on scene, Ganesha Peggs, followed by Officer Beckles, stood at the doorway to Mr. Parker's residence, taking note that he had a weapon aimed at his own head. Cover on the door. You say anything? Huntsville Police! Huntsville Police! He is heading team for several calls for late. 10-3. Hi. I need you to stand up. You got it. 10-3, 1075 threat to Duramus. Charlie 44, just be advised. What's your name? 1049 to his head. Why are you going to take your life, man? Got on drugs. Charlie, can you pin on your helmet? 10-3, 10-49 to his head. She's upstairs. What's her name? What's going on today that you want to take your life? The first two officers kept their composure and talked with Mr. Parker. While more than half of gun deaths in the United States are self-inflicted, most threats like this one are solved by providing sufficient attention to the incident, and the victim can usually be persuaded to drop their weapon and are taken into protective custody through a PET team, also known as a psychological evaluation team, a resource made to almost all law enforcement agencies. An overwhelming amount of situations like this end peacefully, where threats are made instead of quietly being carried out in isolation. Patients that make threats often end up receiving some form of mental health care and are released to live out their life with various forms of support. It is a widely known fact that these types of calls are often calls for help or created to commit suicide by cop. Police are given protocols and training for these types of incidents. They are instructed to ensure the public and themselves are safe. They are warned that aiming a weapon at the patient increases their anxiety and exacerbates the situation. Officers are taught to use their communication skills as these are the most effective tools in these incidents. They are instructed to assign roles, establish a perimeter and staging area, request EMS to that area, calling in shields and canines, and to coordinate the entire response along with tons of other options to deal with this very fragile situation. They are not, however, trained to rush into the scene unprotected, instruct other officers to pressure the patient and aim weapons at them, and put their bodies into a possible lane of fire, risking their own and others' lives. Unfortunately for Mr. Parker, Officer William Ben Darby now arrives on scene, and in less than a minute, he abandons all standard operating procedures and does everything he was trained not to do. Yeah, 10 3, 10 35 threat to Durama. Fuck. Forces be advised. 10 49 to us, Why are you going to take your life, man? Huh? Strong out on drugs? It's working too bad. She's upstairs. What's her name? What's going on today that you want to take your life? Put your fucking gun in him. Put his, put the gun down. Put the gun down. He has it to his head. I don't want anything to happen to you right now. It can shoot you. Listen, he's right here in front of me. Hey, hey, brother. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Hey, brother. Put it down, bro. Put the gun put down. Put it down. I'm not going to tell you again. Please. Please. Lower the gun. In less than a minute of his arrival, Officer Darby fires a single round, ending Mr. Parker's life. Not a single officer on scene attempts to provide medical attention to Mr. Parker. In fact, after the incident, Officer Darby seemed more concerned with hiding whatever was in the trunk of his cruiser as he blocked his body cam lens and passed a still unknown object to another officer before his vehicle, person, or personal effects could be investigated after the murder. They ain't gonna take my sidearm, are they? They are going to have you download it, but I don't think they'll take it from you. Anymore. No, my sidearm. Yeah, no, this gun. 
Yeah, they're going to take it from the ground. I didn't shoot it. 59, shoot a shotgun. Then they'll take the shotgun. They're not going to take this. They're not going to make me unload it. Probably not. Am I allowed to have a backpack with me? You can have, your car will stay right here. If not, we'll take it down to the precinct. No, at the end of shift, am I going to be able to get my stuff out of this car? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll be able to take it to Greenbrier, too. You just I need you to... While you're on administrative duties after that, you will not be able to drive. I need you to hold something of mine in your trunk, and I need to get it to you. I need to get it from you today when I go home. Huh? Where's your car? The incident led to murder charges against Officer Darby. However, the city council voted to provide $125,000 in tax dollars to fund his criminal defense, claiming that the murder was within the line and scope of Officer Darby's duty. Council members would later admit that they voted to fund his defense without seeing the body cam footage. Officer Janisha Peggs testified against Darby, telling the jury that she was trying to de-escalate the situation until Darby arrived. The jury found Officer Darby guilty of murder, but even after the conviction, Darby remained on the city payroll for two months until he resigned himself, all while the city officials refused to release body cam footage. The footage remained hidden from the public until Judge Donna Pate, who presided over the murder trial, issued an order to release the videos. An attorney representing the city argued against the release by writing, quote, The body-worn camera videos are the property of the city, not the parties to this case. The city maintains that the videos are non-public and privileged law enforcement records protected from disclosure under the Alabama Open Records Act. However, exhibits used in trials are to be made public, with very limited exceptions, and because of that, the videos were released. As written by AL.com, the public could not have a greater interest than in the videos used in obtaining a criminal conviction of a publicly employed police officer whose defense was funded by the taxpayers and whose salary the public paid for more than three years after the events that were in question. In this case, the videos, recorded by cameras that are funded by tax dollars, will show the public exactly what happened. They showed what turned out to be a flare gun in the hands of Officer Darby's victim. Darby's attorneys asked for a 20-year sentence. However, the mayor, the police chief, and inmate Darby were all unwilling to admit that what he did was wrong, and the judge sentenced him to 25 years and is not eligible for an appeal bond. Mr. Parker's family has since filed a wrongful death and excessive force lawsuit against the officer and the city. Know that there is always help available outside of calling armed enforcers to your home. Situations like this are preventable. Phone numbers other than 911 are listed below if you or anyone you know are experiencing a mental crisis. All three body cams in full are linked below. As always, thanks for watching. If you have a video you'd like to submit for review, use the link in the description or pinned comment. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for future content. And remember to like, share, and comment down below of what you think of this interaction. It really helps the channel. If you enjoy our content, try our other channels, Lackluster Limited for criminal psychology content and The Odd Side for paranormal videos. Shirts and other merchandise are available at the Teespring store. Membership start at just a buck if you'd like to help further support the channel and get a slick lack logo next to your name. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All links are down below.